here we go here we go uh here we go so we are back once again for an English lesson uh I'm just checking to make sure that everything's working once again we'll get started in 32 seconds um I am in a really good mood this morning I had a good night's sleep and I'm looking forward to teaching all of you a little bit about how to describe things that you like. If you're kind of confused about what this lesson's going to be about, I'll explain it all in just a moment. We'll get started in about six seconds and then you will find out what I'm going to be talking about. Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about describing things you like. As you go through life, there are things that you like. There are things you like doing and in English, there's unique ways to describe different experiences. There's unique ways to describe different things you do. In today's English lesson, I'm going to talk about how to describe a book that you liked reading, a movie, a TV show that you like, maybe a trip uh, and we'll also look of course at music. So, in this lesson, I'll give you some unique phrases. This English lesson is a little different than what I've done in the past. Instead of teaching just vocabulary words, I'll be teaching unique, cool, common, interesting phrases to describe different things that you like. I had to uh, stop myself from describing things you don't like because I'll save that for another lesson. So, in this lesson, uh, we'll just look at things you like and how to describe them. For those of you that are going to be taking an English test in the future, this will be a great lesson because often you need to describe something that you liked doing or something that you enjoyed. So, let's get started uh, with this lesson on describing things you like. But of course, before we get started, I should mention that Todd and Dave are here to moderate the chat. Thank you to both of them for being here. Uh thank you to all of you who are here to learn. I do appreciate English learners. I know it is a difficult job. I hope this is one of the things you like. <laughs> but I do wanna say hi to Mode Ags Key Park. By the way, thank you to Mode Ags who let me know yesterday that I had a typo in the title of my video. So, thanks Mode for that. I to Spike and Key Park, uh, Fumin, Fritz, a uh, Lemon Cute, Audi the Thai, Freddie Wolf, Apple the Frog, Lolly Lolly, Sita, Biko, uh, let's see here, Leticia, Paco San, Wallop, Eugene from Etobicoke is here as well. Nice weather today, Eugene. Here it's about five degrees and sunny. I hope you're having the same up there in Toronto. Uh, and hi to Sax, Sakthi, My Dance, Blissful. Mummy, Audi the Thai and all of you who are here to learn some English. Remember, the chat is a great place to practice your English. Have little English conversations with each other about the topic or about other things. Oh, I should say hi to speak English with this guy. That's Brent down there in America and a big hello to Rod, the English teacher. By the way, Rod has a bit of a surprise for you when this lesson's done. If you head over to Rod's channel, there's a video where Rod and I chatted for a little bit last week and Rod recorded it. Uh we chatted a little bit about uh my YouTube journey. So, if you're interested in that, I think it's premiering in about one hour as soon as this lesson is done. But enough talking. We should get the lesson started. So, let's do that. Let me do one more audio check though. I'm feeling a little bit I feel like things are a little finicky this morning. The computer was working right but uh I feel like at any moment something could go wrong. So, okay, here we go. We're gonna start with songs. So, in this lesson, I'm going to give you phrases that you can use to describe things you like and I'm going to put them into a couple of different categories, a few different categories actually. The first category uh will be songs, songs and music. And the first phrase would be, I like the beat. So, sometimes you like a song because the drummer and the bass guitarist, if it's a rock song, um they just create a really good beat. The song, you can hear the drums. It makes you want to maybe tap your foot or maybe just kind of clap a little bit. Maybe you like to clap along. These are the things old people do. (laughs) Maybe it makes you wanna dance a little bit but you would just say, I like the beat. Or this song has a good beat. Oh, I like this song. I like the beat. This song has a good beat. 
So, I tried to get a picture of a drummer and a bass guitarist. Obviously, um I'm talking about rock music but other types of music as well. You would be able to say I like the beat. You might like the lyrics. You might enjoy a song because the lyrics are just really really meaningful. When I say lyrics, I mean words and you can say that as well. You could say, oh, this is a great song. I like the lyrics or this is a great song. I like the words and of course, in English, you can always replace like with love if you want to emphasize it a little bit more. You could say, oh, I love the lyrics. This song has great lyrics. I love the lyrics or you could say, I love the words. This song uh, is really meaningful to me. I love the words. You could also just express how the song makes you feel. So, a common way to describe a song would be to say, it makes me feel good. Oh, I like this song. It makes me feel good. When this song comes on the radio, (laughs) you can tell I'm old. I still listen to the radio. When this song comes on the radio, it makes me feel good. You could also just say, this song gives me a good feeling. I enjoy this song. It makes me feel good or I enjoy this song. It gives me a good feeling feeling. There are a lot of songs that I like because they just um I don't know. They make me smile. They it's like they lighten my mood a little bit. Uh especially when I'm driving a long distance. It's good to have uh songs come on the radio that make me feel good. Sometimes there's a song that you like and you would describe it by saying it's easy to sing along. When you have a song where you can clearly hear the lyrics and where the melody of the song is easy to remember, you might describe it as saying, oh, this is a great song. It's so easy to sing along. Remember in English, sometimes we add the word so to emphasize. This song is great. It's so easy to sing along or it's easy to sing along. Often when you are a child or when you're a kid, you will learn songs that are easy to sing along. Um maybe your parents or a teacher will say, okay, I'm going to teach you this song um while I sing and play my guitar. Please sing along. So, often for me, I enjoy um songs that are easy to sing along to but only if I'm by myself. So, if I'm driving by myself and a song comes on that's easy to sing along to, uh, I will sing but as I've mentioned before, I have trouble singing on key. Uh if you said sing a C sharp, I I can't do that. (laughs) I don't know how to sing on key. You might also say it's a great dance song. We talked about this a little bit when I talked about a song having a good beat but you might just say, oh, this is a great dance song or um let's get out on the dance floor. This is a great dance song. So, a good dance song or great dance song will have a good beat. It will make you want to move. (laughs) This is as much dancing as I'm doing in the video Uh, but it will make you want to get up and move. So, when you hear a song um that just has a good beat and a fast beat usually, um it's a song where you would say it's a great dance song. And then you might have songs that you would describe by saying it brings back memories. So, there are a lot of songs that when I hear them, um I really enjoy them because they bring back memories. When a song brings back memories, it means that when you hear it, you think of a time when you were a teenager or you think of a time when you were younger uh or maybe you even think of a time a few years ago or just a month ago but a song that brings back memories is usually quite enjoyable to listen to. Um there's quite a few songs from the nineties and the early 2000s that when I hear them, they bring back memories of my time at university or the time when Jen and I were first married before we had kids. Um that was a time where we listened to a lot of music because I think we were just always doing things and having lots of fun. Children are fun. I'm not saying the fun stopped after we had kids but there are certainly songs that uh bring back memories. It's relaxing. So, you might have certain songs that you listen to because they just make you feel at peace. They just calm you down. You might say, oh, I like that song. It's so relaxing. Maybe you listen to classical music at night 
maybe that's the kind of music that you find very relaxing. Uh and so, you put on some classical music and you sit down uh and maybe you just think about your day and the music relaxes you. So, you might describe the song by saying it's relaxing. Then we also have a funny little phrase in English where we say it it has a catchy tune or you might say it is a catchy tune. You could use both. So, you could say ah, I love this song. It's it has a catchy tune. That means that when you hear it once or twice um it's easy to remember maybe the chorus or it's easy really quickly to sing along. It's just a song that's really well written, really fun and enjoyable and you can remember and maybe whistle. (laughs) Maybe you can whistle the tune later because it's catchy. It's very easy to remember. I just wanted to mention one other thing. You'll notice that I use the present tense for all of these, right? It's it is easy to sing along. It's a great dance song. Um we don't usually use the past tense when talking about songs. We don't say things like it was relaxing. It was a relaxing song. You would say oh, I like this song. It is a relaxing song. We don't often talk about uh music in the past tense um but some of the things coming up we might. So, just wait for that. Let's do a few questions. Let me get the questions on the screen here. So, we'll do questions for about 10 minutes. Let me do a quick audio check as I say that. Music was my favorite portion of this. (laughs) So, hopefully, I'm as excited to do the rest of the lesson. Um let me get a question on the screen here. Um let's see. I have a few questions. So, Yaroslav says, morning the wisest teacher Bob. How are you? What's your favorite activity on the farm? How would you describe it? Take care. My favorite activity would be anything in that involves driving my tractors. So, I like being on the tractor. I like working up ground. I like tilling the ground with the rototiller for Jen. Uh it's just I don't know. I would say it's relaxing. I would describe it the same way as music because when I drive the tractor, I don't have to think about much. I can just kind of relax and focus on one simple job. Uh so, that's what I would say. Anything involving uh driving the tractor. Um I'm gonna skip questions that aren't related to the topic, okay? We're gonna stay on topic here. Um I'll do this one quick though. So, Sia says, hi, Bob. I hope you're happy this year. I have a question real quick. Is there any difference between astonishing and astounding? Thank you, sir. Have a great day. They are very similar. And both kind of express that you're surprised at what you are seeing. Uh let's see here. From Neo 8. What did you like to do when you were a kid? Can you describe it for a bit? Thank you. I liked being outside. So, I grew up on this farm and I would say I liked being outside. Um I had a slingshot as a kid. So, you could um you could get little uh little rocks and pull it back and let it go and I would shoot cans off of uh the fence. That was a lot of fun. I had a typical country upbringing. So, I would say being outside and I actually my kids would be surprised by this but I really really liked cats. So, I would play with the farm cats a lot. Uh let's see here. Ruslan. Hello, dear teacher Bob. How are you today, sir? I'm good, Ruslan. I hope you are as well. How do you describe a city you would like to live in the most? You would say I'd really love to live there someday or you would say I'd love to move there. So, let's talk about a city like Toronto. You could say oh, I've always wanted to live there or I'd love to live there someday or I'd love to move there. So, that first phrase came out naturally. I've always wanted to live there. I think that's probably the most common way to say it. Like Tokyo, oh, I've always wanted to live there. That would be how I would describe it. Um Mode says, no way. I also had a slingshot as a kid. I think it's a common toy for people who live out in the country. I think less so in the city because they're a little bit dangerous. So, let me see here. Let me get to the next question. Um I'm just skipping the next one from Slava. Hi, dear teacher. How to say correctly, I like fishing or I like to go fishing or I love to go fishing. Thanks. Have a great day. So, the basic phrase would be I like fishing. That means in general, 
You just like going to the lake or river and fishing. So, I like fishing. Correct. I like to go fishing. Also correct. You could say either and or I love to go fishing is totally correct but it means you really really like it. Like as soon as you use love instead of like you're emphasizing that you like doing it. So, your phrases are all correct. Oh, I like fishing. Do you like fishing? Yes, I like fishing. Uh do you like fishing? Yep, I like to go fishing or do you like fishing? I love to go fishing. Uh let's see here. From Ilya, what do you like about living in Canada? How can you describe this country in three words? Thanks in advance. Best regards, Ilya. So, when I describe living in Canada, what I do like is that um I feel like we live in a country where I have some freedom. I can do what I want to do when I want to do it. I like that we have um free healthcare although as I've mentioned, we pay a lot of taxes in order to have free healthcare. Um but how can you describe this country in three words? I would say fresh air. It's very very nice outside. I would say um expensive. I know that's not a positive thing but it is expensive to live in Canada. Uh and I would say relaxing. There's a lot of nice outdoor spaces to go to um that uh are just very nice to be in. Essie says, sometimes songs can change my mood. It is magical, is it not? Yes, it definitely is an incredible thing. You can listen to one song and go from being in a bad mood to being in a good mood. I love that feeling when a good song comes on the radio and it changes. Great, great comment, Essie, by the way. Um Kimmy and Kiwi from Korea. Good morning, Bob. How would you describe the kind of trip you like? Thanks. So, I'm gonna talk about trips at the end but I'll steal one of the phrases. You might say it was, let's see here. Um it was a once in a lifetime experience. We'll talk about that phrase a bit later but sometimes you go on a really amazing trip and that's how you would describe it. There's a few other ways too but we'll get to that. Uh let's see here from Henry from Taiwan. Hi, teacher Bob. Have you ever been to Disneyland or Disney World? Everyone likes to indulge themselves in the wonderful ambience as a kid. Thank you. I have not. Um I think that's a pretty expensive trip. When I was a kid, my parents did not have enough money to take me on a trip like that. So, I have not been there and we have not taken our kids there either. Sounds fun though. Um from Apple the frog. I like the emojis. Hello, Bob. How's your day? Good so far. My question is, can we say the sentence, it gives me memories instead of it brings back memories. Have a nice day. We generally say, oh, this brings back memories or we say, remember when. This song makes me think about um that time when we went camping, okay? So, it brings back memories of that trip. We almost always use the second one um for sure. Uh let, or I do for sure. Um let's see here. <laughs> this is this is probably mode doing this but Brent in disguise says, first of all, a shout out. I just wanna say thanks for the deep dive videos. I take great pleasure watching them. You know who I am, Brent. So, this might be Brent from speak English with this guy. It could be but it could also be another regular viewer pretending to be Brent. Um you guys can guess in the chat. Uh, who this is. Uh let's see here. From Freddie from the Hexagon. Hi, Bob. At the moment, I have no questions. I just wanna say hello and send you my best wishes and many, many thanks. So, the Hexagon refers to the country of France. If you look at it on a map, it kinda looks like it has six sides. Let's see here. From Ario. Hello, I'm late. No problem, Ario. My favorite things to do, watch anime, Watch your channels, watch Mr. Brent's channel and listen to music. Describe things you like, please. So, I'm describing books next which are things I like. So, we'll get to that in just a minute and I'll uh, give you some phrases on how to do that. Uh let's see here. From Winter Wright. Hi, Bob. What do you like to play or share with your wife and children? Have a nice day. I really enjoy last fall every weekend we went for a hike as a family. We we got up early and we would go somewhere outdoors usually in the forest or out in um a park and we would go for a hike. I really really enjoyed that. Excuse me. (coughs) 
Sorry about that. Um that would be the thing I like the most. I like going for a hike because it's invigorating. When something's invigorating it like you do an activity and it makes you feel healthy and good but it's also relaxing. Uh let's see here. I think I'm gonna get back to the lesson. This is from someone who's C eight U F. Since you're also a French speaker, how would you describe France? I would describe France as I'd love to go there someday. Notice earlier we said uh the phrase you know I I've always wanted to live there. I would say I've always wanted to go there. So, I don't wanna move to France but I would really really like to go there someday. That's how I would describe France as a country that I would love to visit someday. Hey, let me do an audio check and we'll get right back to the lesson. I notice in the chat isn't me. Yeah, my guess is mode. So, people are trying to guess who left the Brent in disguise comment. That was a good one. Uh let's get back to the lesson though. Let's uh let's keep on moving. Books. Sometimes you read a book and you really really like it and you might be asked uh about the book. Someone might say, did you like the book? And you want to be able to describe it. So, we're going to look at positive ways to describe a book. We're going to look at a few ways to describe books that you liked reading. So, interestingly here, I'm going to use either the present tense or the past tense. So, when we talk about books, you can you can use the present tense. Even if you read it last month, you can still say things like, oh, it's a real page turner. Did you read The Client by John Grisham? Yes, it's a real page turner. You could also flip to the past tense and say, yeah, it was a real page turner. So, again, you probably have figured it out already. When you say a book is a real page turner, it means that it's so exciting and good to read that you you flip the pages really quickly. Like, you read fast and um if you think about it like a cartoon, the person's just flipping pages really really quickly. But certainly, a way to describe a good book in English would be to say, oh, it's a real page turner. Um, or again in the past tense, it was a real page turner. I did read the client. It was a real page turner. You could also say, I couldn't put it down. Okay? So, there are books that I read where I read one or two chapters and it's just not that interesting. But there are books like The Alchemist which many of you recommended that I read. Uh a while ago, I did a survey on books people were reading. By the way, this is by a Brazilian author named Paulo Coelho. I think I'm pronouncing that right. It is a great book. So, I couldn't put it down. It meant that if I had an hour to read, I would usually read for more than an hour because it was so interesting and so fun to read. So, if you read a book that um you just want to read all day long and do nothing else, you would describe it by saying, I couldn't put it down. So, that's kind of in the past. In the present, you could just say, oh, I can't put it down. Um I'm reading a book right now by Paulo Coelho and I can't put it down. So, that would be a way to describe a book that's really good. We also will say, I read it cover to cover which is an interesting way to describe a book because for me, when I read a book, I always read the whole book. There are no books where I've read half the book and stopped reading it. I almost okay, that's a lie. Bob the Canadian just lied to you. There are very few books that I haven't finished reading but you could say this. You could say, oh, I read The Martian by Andy Weir. I read it cover to cover. It was a really, really good book. By the way, I do like this book. If you are learning English, I think it's a great book to read. It does have some swear words in it. You need to be aware of that but uh, I definitely uh I read it cover to cover. When someone says that about a book, it's a very positive thing. It means that it is a very good book. And then we have this phrase. I know this sounds kind of funny. It's a good book or it was a good book. You can use the present or past. Um it's kind of a funny thing, isn't it? It's a good book. It's such a basic phrase but it's very, very common, okay? If I was to say, um oh, did you read The Humans by Matt Haig? Yeah, it's a good book. Um oh, I read it last week. It was a great book. It was a good book. So, we do just in a basic way talk about books. That's why there's a website called goodreads.com 
I don't know if you know about that but it's a website where people say whether a book was good or not. So, uh, a basic description but still very, very common. And then we have, I read it in one sitting. So, it, there might be a book that's just so fun and so amazing and so exciting to read that you sat down and you read the whole book in one sitting. This is rare. I did not do this with The Hobbit. The book is way too thick. It's too long for that but uh definitely um a thinner book. Like if you read The Pearl by John Steinbeck, um that's a fairly thin book and it's really enjoyable and you could sit and read it in one sitting. Obviously, if you say a book, uh it was so good, I read it in one sitting. It means it's a good book because it was so exciting, you could not stop reading it. Hey, let's talk a little bit about movies and TV and how to describe them in a positive way. We often watch movies in our house and we watch a lot of television as well and so there are certain ways to describe movies and TV and we usually talk about what happens in the show or in the movie. So, let's start with it's action packed. So, again with movies, you can talk about it in the present or the past. So, the Fast and the Furious movies, they are action packed. You would say this movie it was action packed or it's action packed. I watched the Fast and the Furious. It's action packed. Action in a movie involves car chases or gunfights or anything that's fast and exciting. Maybe someone's getting chased around a city. So, I would say the Fast and the Furious, if I was to describe it, I would say it's action packed. When some when we describe something in English as being packed, it means it's it's full of that thing. So, this would basically mean the movie is full of action and I don't know if you've watched these movies. They're definitely action packed for sure. Now, at the other end of the spectrum, we have movies that are real tear jerkers. So, any kind of movie that we would describe as a tear jerker is a movie that would make you cry. Maybe it's a love story. Maybe it's a story of uh someone who's loses their pet and they find them back a year later but anytime uh um anytime a story causes you to almost cry, we would say it's a tearjerker. The notebook is a bit of a tearjerker. I don't know if you've watched it. By the way, I think tearjerker is supposed to have a dash in it. You might wanna check that before you use that. There might be a small mistake there. I was on the edge of my seat. So, whenever you watch a movie that's incredibly exciting, you would say I was on the edge of my seat. When I saw the movie Twister, It's a movie about tornadoes and people chasing tornadoes and it's just crazy and it has really good special effects. I was on the edge of my seat. It doesn't mean you actually sat on the edge of your seat but it means you were the movie was so exciting that it's like you were um instead of relaxing like instead of watching the movie, you were more like totally engaged and totally interested. I was on the edge of my seat. So, we use the word worthy sometimes and with Netflix in particular because you can watch one show after another. You can binge watch shows. So, when you binge watch, it means you sit down and watch like eight in a row or ten in a row. We sometimes say a show is binge worthy if we really like it. So, I watched the Marvel series Loki last spring and I would say it's binge worthy. It was really fun to watch. I like those types of movies. It was very exciting. It was a little bit action packed as well but a different kind of action. Um but we would say it's binge worthy. So, it's worthy of sitting down and watching more than one episode after another. Definitely Loki I thought was uh binge worthy for sure. It was a very fun series to watch. And sometimes we have what's called a feel good movie. I don't know if you've watched the movie Babe. It's an older movie. It's the story of a little pig who grows up on a farm and the farmer's really fun and the farmer sings a song at one point and it almost makes me cry but it's a movie where you are happy when you are watching it. It's a movie where you just it's a feel good movie. It literally means exactly what it says. It makes you feel good and in English, we take that and we turn it into a descriptor or adjective for the movie and we say 
Babe is a feel good movie. Or you could say it was a feel good movie. Yeah, I watched it. Oh, it was a feel good movie. So, it made you feel good. Just looking where I am here. You might just say that a TV show is hilarious. So, if you've ever watched The Office, now, mind you, it's a it's a unique kind of humor. Um it might not be to your taste but I thought The Office was hilarious or I could say it's hilarious. The show is just really, really funny. So, when you watch a TV show or movie that's really funny, you might say it's hilarious. I, I still laugh when I watch this. I'm wor- I, I think sometimes though some of the humor is getting a bit old. So, I'm not sure younger people would find it hilarious. We use the word worthy as well when a movie is just so well made, we think it might win an award. So, the award show for movies is called the Oscars. You can win a little statue of a man for directing or acting or the music. But before the Oscars happen, there are movies where people would describe them by saying, oh, it's Oscar worthy. Oh, he, it was an Oscar worthy performance or that movie is Oscar worthy. This means that we think that movie is so good that it should win an award. And then we have must see. When you say a movie is a must see, this is a little bit like the term feel good. You can figure out what it means when you say it's a must see. It means that you should go see it. When I saw Iron Man, I said to my brother, oh, it's a great movie. It's a must see. That means that you should go and see it. Don't miss it. Um go to the theater and watch it or maybe rent it when it comes out on a DVD. Certainly, don't wait till it comes out on Netflix someday. It's a must see. So, go to the theater, buy a ticket and go and see that movie. Hey, we're gonna do some questions again but I'm going to flip to members only mode. Sorry, I was I don't know if you could tell I was a little distracted there because um my My dog was making some noise. You probably couldn't hear it but I could hear in the background but Jen has come now and taken the dog and they're outside for a walk. So, that makes things a little more relaxing for me. Uh let me just check the audio for a second here. There we go. Hey, so as I bump my microphone, we are in members only chat mode. For those of you that are not members, uh don't leave. The lesson will continue in about eight or nine minutes. If you are a member, you can ask questions or make comments in the chat right now and I will read them and I'll also continue to look at questions from over here. So, one thing I didn't do in this lesson was describe food but Sakthi says, Mr. Bob, could you describe your favorite cuisine you like? I would say I really like pizza. Um whenever I know we're having pizza for supper, I I would just say I'm happy. That's one, that's my description. I'll have to think about that one a bit more. Uh just I did do a whole lesson on describing food though. If you do a search, that might find you might find some more answers there. Mode Egg says, yes, Pixar movies although animated aren't meant for kids only. That's true. That is very, very true. Uh let's see here and Brent says, I never hear Oscar. <laughs> yeah, I just thought what I think happened is He was sleeping. He actually sleeps behind that door and I think when I started talking about movies that are Oscar worthy, he heard me say Oscar and then I could hear him walking. He was pacing around behind me. So, I'm not sure if you guys uh, heard that at all but I guess I said Oscar when I was talking about Oscar worthy movies. Uh Adi the Thai. Hi, teacher Bob. How's it going? Before I like to listen to music between um I'm not sure about jockeying but nowadays I like Oh, maybe jogging. I like to walk with your and teacher Brent's podcast. Have a nice weekend. That's a great thing to listen to. I often listen to French when I'm on my walk. Um if I'm not walking on the road. When I walk on the road, I don't listen to anything because it's a bit dangerous. Um Mode says, you did a whole lesson on describing food. Yes, there is a I think a good lesson available if you want to search for it. So, Sakthi, if you need that. Maria C says, hi, Bob. Seinfeld and Curb Your Enthusiasm are hilarious. They are funny. I have not watched. So, I watched Seinfeld. I've only watched one episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm and I did think it was hilarious. I should watch the rest. 
Uh, let's see. Yaroslav says, certainly he barked in Canadian. <laughs> yes. Maria C, right? Uh, and Freddie says, hey, Bob, by the way, we didn't see Oscar for a while. How is he doing? I'm gonna make a little switch there. So, Oscar will be in the next video on Tuesday. Uh, one of the segments, uh, there's about a one minute segment where I talk about the phrase, you can't teach an old dog new tricks and there will be a surprise for all of you in that section. I won't tell you what it is but the video coming out this Tuesday, um, I talk about a number of different English phrases and uh, Oscars in one scene. That's all I'll say. Um, Betty Lou, by the way, Oscar's doing great. Betty Lou, hi, the cutest teacher, Bob. I was wondering if people in Canada use the word banger. Have a good one. I don't but I have heard younger people use that phrase uh, in a positive way. So, let's look up meaning of banger. Let's get the this, the good meaning. Um, a sa- a song with loud energetic beat that's good for dancing to. But I've heard people use it to describe other things positively but I don't wanna talk about it too much because I'm old and it's new slang and I don't know the exact meaning but I will find out. Um, let's see here. Cecilia says, I totally agree with you, Brent. The last Pixar animation movie, Turning Red is fabulous. I should see that. I haven't seen it yet. Sita says, I just want to say thanks again for your great work, Mr. Bob. You rock. Thanks for the interview with Rod. I'll be there. Yes. Once again, Rod, the English teacher. So, Rod is in the chat right now. Uh, Rod and I chatted on Zoom last week for a bit and Rod recorded it uh, and edited it a bit and he's releasing it on his channel. Just a little interview of us chatting for a bit. We hadn't talked for a few months so it was fun to get together and then um, talk a little bit about my YouTube channel and my YouTube journey. So, if you're interested in that, it's premiering right after this lesson on his channel. Let's see here. Um, Brent says, that's so funny about Oscar. Yeah, I I hadn't thought of that. Normally, he sleeps during my lessons because he's already been outside for quite a while but uh, this morning, he was um I guess roused. He was woken up. (laughs) Wanda says, hi, teacher Bob. I like I wonder if the sentence ends there or if there's more. I'm glad you liked the lesson though. Key part, can I say Bob's video episodes are binge worthy? Sure, if you watch more than two or three episodes in a row and you like them, you would say they're binge worthy. Yes, (laughs) they're not Oscar worthy. (laughs) No, not at all. Yaroslav says, can I say he instead of it talking about dogs and animals? I'm a little confused. Yes, so we do use gender as well. Usually, when you know a dog and you know its gender, you use he. So, when I talk about Oscar, I say he's outside right now with Jen. He was sleeping behind me. We rarely use it um, unless we don't know. So, we might say like let's say someone got a new cat. You might say is it a boy or a girl? That would be a common question to ask. Uh, Wanda, hi, teacher Bob. When can I use I like the best? Thanks. Um, So, if you're reading, if you've read a lot of books, you could say the book I liked the best was The Client by John Grisham. So, that's how you would use that. Uh let's see here. Brent from Speak English with this guy says, I've heard YouTubers call a video they make that does really well as a absolute banger. Yeah, I think it's starting to mean something that's doing well or something that's really cool or something that's awesome. Because I thought I heard a student say uh, that game the other night was a banger and uh, honestly, I'm getting too old for slang. I better do some research today. Mode eggs. You did a whole bunch of lessons whose titles start with describing. I guess it's because you're very articulate. English leaves me no option but to be flowery. <laughs> too many ways to describe things. Yes, I did a lot of lessons on describing things because a lot of people were requesting that type of lesson to get ready for their IELTS or TOEFL test. I don't know how to pronounce those exactly but I think when you take English tests, people want to be ready to be able to describe things for the speaking portion uh, or to be able to understand other portions. Describing things in English is a very common component of an English test. Um Pedro says, yeah, I can't wait to see Oscar. Well, you'll see him in a few days. Mode says, this video is a masterpiece. I don't have that description but thank you. That's a vote of confidence for sure. Um, 
If YouTube has an Oscar award, maybe I should get it. Is that what you're saying, Key Park? Yaroslav says, thanks for explanation. The wisest teacher. By the way, Yaroslav, I did a lesson a long time ago about pets but I think I should do another one. Maybe I'll go and watch that old lesson and maybe figure out maybe I can talk about a few other things when it comes to pets either as a short lesson or a Friday lesson. Uh let's see here. Um mode. If you don't click the like button on this video, ferocious mode is gonna come after you and haunt you at night. Believe me, you don't want this to happen. Boo. And then there's a little ghost emoji. I didn't know there was a ghost emoji but there definitely is one. Rod, the English teacher says, I re- I'm really a fan of Friends. It's an old show I know. However, I'm an old person. Friends is still a good show in my opinion. So, in fact, um in my classes when students write French plays. Sometimes they'll write a play using the characters from friends but it's in French because um it I think people of all ages still watch that show. Cecilia says, Bob, thanks so much for this lesson. It's super helpful. No problem. Thanks for watching. And Freddie says, il existe des films dramatiques ou comiques. How can we call them or what would we call them? Would you also speak about blockbusters in your lesson? So, a blockbuster is a movie that just does really well. Usually in the summer in North America, we have summer blockbusters because uh younger people especially have more time to go see movies. Um but how would we describe? We would describe it as a comedy uh and then we would just say it's a it's a drama of some kind. I'm yeah, I'm trying to think. We sometimes just say it's a serious movie or it's um it's a historical movie. Um yeah, I'm trying to think what dramatique what we would say. Let me think about that one and I'll try to put it in the comments below. Hey, let me get back to my lesson here. Hopefully, everyone hasn't uh clicking in the wrong spot again. How many times do I do that every week? There we go. So, we're gonna go back to subscriber only mode. I didn't get to all of the questions over here but there's only about five or six left. Uh, I'll do them at the end. For now though, we will get back to the lesson. Thank you to all of you who are members. Uh once again, if you are not a member and you would like to support my channel, there's a join button below or somewhere that you can click and it will kind of explain what being a member is all about. Um I do thank all of you though who are members. You guys are awesome. You help uh in a way, you help make this channel what it is because you help me uh buy the things I need. Uh, in order to be able to make the videos that I make. So, thanks once again. Let's get back to the lesson. Sports. So, when you describe sports, I'm mostly going to be describing uh actually watching a game. Not necessarily in person. It could also be on television but uh when you see a really, really good game, it's fun to be able to describe it. So, the first description would be this. It was a nail biter. So, people sometimes bite their nails when they're nervous. We describe a game where the score is really, really close especially at the end of the game as a nail biter. It doesn't mean you're actually biting your nails because you're nervous but when your team is winning by one point and then the other team ties it up and then the other team is winning by one point and then your team ties it up and when that continues, we say it's a real nail biter or it was a real nail biter. It was a game where it was exciting to watch but you were also worried that your team was going to lose the whole time because the score was so close. Uh you could also say it was a roller coaster. So, maybe your team is winning at the beginning and then they're losing at halftime and then they're winning um towards the end and then at the very end, they lose. So, you were happy and then sad and happy and then sad. We say it's like a roller coaster. A roller coaster is a ride at an amusement park where you sit in a little car on a track and it goes up and down. So, you can see your emotions during the game go up and down and we describe the game by saying it was a roller coaster. You might just say it was thrilling. Thrilling uh is a pretty common word when talking about a sports uh game. You would say, ah, that game was thrilling. That was an amazing game. It was thrilling. I wanted to put this word in as well because I know it's a little bit difficult for English learners to say. So, let me say it one more time. It was thrilling. It was thrilling. Let's talk a little bit about trips and experiences. 
The next few phrases are phrases you don't use very often in life but they are very common after doing something amazing or going on an amazing trip. And I talked about one of them earlier. It was it was a once in a lifetime experience. So, there is probably a trip that you've either done or that you are going to do and you'll probably only do it once in your life. I went to South Africa many years ago on a school trip and I would say it was a once in a lifetime experience. That means I'm probably not going again. It means that it was a very enjoyable trip. I just really really liked it. It was beautiful to see the country of South Africa and if someone asked me, hey, did you have a good trip? I would say, oh, it was a once in a lifetime experience. So, again, not a phrase you use that often. Maybe just once in a lifetime but a phrase used to describe um usually a trip but other things as well. Like if maybe you went to a Beyonce concert, you might say, oh, it was a once in a lifetime experience. We bought uh we were in the 10th row. We spent a lot of money on the tickets. It was an amazing show. It was a once in a lifetime experience. You could also say it was the thrill of a lifetime. Maybe you've jumped out of a plane with a parachute and it was very exciting and you had a lot of fun doing it. Uh maybe it was uh like your adrenaline. You had an adrenaline rush. That means your your body physically reacts and you get excited. You could say it was the thrill of a lifetime. You could also say it was a thrill of a lifetime. You could switch the article there but I would say it was the thrill of a lifetime. So, something that was super super exciting. It was a dream come true. So, if I was able to go to the city of Paris and if I was able to visit for a month, I would probably describe it by saying it was a dream come true. I went to Paris last year. I stayed for a whole month. It was a dream come true. So, all of us have dreams. Um when you sleep, you have dreams but you can also have dreams about what you want to do in life. Maybe you want to visit Canada. And if you visited Canada when you went back home, you could say, oh, it was a dream come true. I saw Niagara Falls. I saw the Rocky Mountains. It was a dream come true. And again, this isn't just for trips. You could use it to describe an experience as well. Maybe you had front row tickets to a Toronto Raptors game and you saw a basketball game live. Um you could say, oh, it was a dream come true. It's something I always wanted to do. It was a dream come true. You could also say, I had the time of my life. I have this picture here because I always thought it would be fun to go to Times Square in New York on New Year's Eve. I've never done it but if I was able to do that, I think when I got home, I would say to people, you know what? It was great. I had the time of my life. There was music. There was dancing. There was uh there were fireworks. Um I had the time of my life. So, basically, you're saying It was one of the most enjoyable things that you've done in your life. And we have the phrase, it was a night to remember. So, oddly, I don't think we have the phrase, it was a day to remember. We would probably just say the day was memorable but we do have the phrase, it was a night to remember. A lot of times, this is used for uh like a wedding, a wedding celebration. So, often in North America, people get married in the afternoon and they have a party later in the evening called a reception and it's usually a very enjoyable time for the bride and groom and they might describe it later as saying, oh, it was a night to remember. It was just so beautiful. It was a night to remember. Now, again, you can use this for other experiences as well. Maybe you went to a really beautiful concert and after the concert, you can say, oh, you know, it was a night to remember. It was just really, really beautiful. I really, really enjoyed myself. Hey, that is the end of the slides but not the end of the lesson. I have a few questions to answer yet and I have to check something here for a moment. I probably should say this. Uh hi to the 343 people watching. Uh if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe especially if you want to see the surprise in the next video. You should subscribe. Anyways, let me jump over to the questions. I have a few questions left and we will wrap up this lesson. Um let's see. Fyodor says, hello, Bob. 
How do school children call other school children who like studying and school subjects? Well, it's a negative term but they might call them a nerd right now. They might say, oh, you're such a nerd or you're such a geek. Um that also can mean someone who likes computers though but generally students who do really well in school um someone might call them a nerd and again, it's not positive. It's not a positive term. I'll have to ask my students today. There's probably some new term that I don't know for that. Um let me see here. This is from Mohammed. My family of four are living in Germany. How would you describe the cloudy and wooded Germany? Do you like to would you like to move to Germany? Little fix there. If not, may I know why? Yes, I would love to visit Germany but I have no desire to move to Germany because I think it's too late for me to learn another language. I would love to live in France for a little bit but I do like living in Canada. Um and how would I describe Germany? I would just say Um it's there's lots of forests. There's lots of valleys. It's a beautiful country. I have seen a few documentaries um but you might even use the word gorgeous. There are some really gorgeous areas in Germany. This is from Mengzin. Hi, Bob. It's my first time to join the live. Well, hello. I love all of your videos and many thanks to you. You're welcome. Could you please describe how you like doing your daily job? I really enjoy my work. If I was to describe it, I would say I find it very rewarding. When you find a job rewarding, it means you feel like you're doing something that helps other people. I like making videos. It's very rewarding for me to know that these videos help people. Um and I think I did a whole lesson on describing work. You should do a search for that and you will find lots of ways to talk about work. Min says, hi, Bob. How are you? How would you describe plants and flowers in the garden? Oh, that's a good one. You would probably just say it's good to get outside. It's good to walk and see the flowers. It's nice to smell the flowers. That's how I would describe it. Um in English too, we say things like it's good to get your hands in the dirt. People who like gardening will say, oh, it's so nice to get get your hands in the dirt. Um like it's nice to do that. Um Shania says, oh, what happened here? One moment, please. Had a little bit, a little bit of a hiccup there. Let me do this. Please uh pause for technical difficulties for some reason. Um let me see. Oh, I know what I did. I <laughs> I closed the window that I need open so the question thing works. So, just wait a moment. I will find it back. I know how to do this. I've been doing this quite regularly. You're wondering what I just did there. That's me hitting control (laughs) Z. Um and it's gonna take me just a second um to get that back up again. So, please pause. Maybe I'll talk in the chat for a bit. I hope all is well for you over there. I think he's talking to Audie. I'm not sure. Let me go back to my questions here. Ah, there we go. So, now I have to get through. Sorry, there wasn't a technical problem. Bob just closed the the window uh where the questions are located. So, I had to open it and find it back and I think I think we're ready. Let's check from Min. Um one more answer. There we go. So, (laughs) I'm getting clumsy. Shania, hello, teacher Bob. I've noticed that Coachella in the States is going well. Have you watched the show and how would I describe the atmosphere of it? Have a good day. I I have not watched Coachella. I've seen news articles. I think it's going really well. I would say it's a very enjoyable experience for the people who are there. That's how I would describe it. It looks like it's a very enjoyable experience. Uh let's see here. From Jocelyn from Peru. Hi, teacher Bob. My question is, is it correct if I say I like it the most or to say do what you like the most? Thanks for the amazing lesson. Have a good day. Um you would probably be specific and say I like this one the best or I liked it the most. I'm not sure I would say I like it the most. Do you like When you try these three drinks, 
I like this one the most. Yeah, I'm usually very specific. Um you would say which one do you think is the best? I think this one is the best. Which one do you like the most? I like this one the most. Um I like milk the most. Of all the things you could drink, I like milk the most. Yeah, I'm very specific when I like I kind of reference the thing I'm talking about. From Kenya, describing beach, just say I love the beach or I like the beach. What is a good describing thing? So, again, like and love when talking about things or experiences are simply a different level. So, I like pizza means that's okay. I mean, I enjoy it. But if I say I love pizza, it means I really, really like it. It might even be my favorite food. So, if you say I like going to the beach in the summer, it means you enjoy it and it's something fun. But if you say I love going to the beach, it means you really, really, really like going. So, it's you're emphasizing it a bit. Uh let's see here. Hobart, hello teacher Bob. Long time no see. What's your favorite book? I still like The Martian by Andy Weir. I had a picture of it up here earlier. Uh I've read it uh three times. Uh twice in English, once in French. Uh and if I wait about five or six years, I can read it again. I have to wait. I can't reread a book too soon because I remember too much of it but I think in about yeah, I think I still have to wait another four or five years. I think I just read it last year again. It's a good book though. Um Audie the Thai says, in my dream, I would like to go camp oh, to go truck camping and hang around your country and the US for a year. Thanks. That would be fun. So, there are a lot of people that live what's called van life right now. So, they get a van and they put a bed in the back and they just live in their van and drive around Canada and the United States. Sounds like that's what Audie the Thai would like to try and do. I think you would really enjoy that. Hey, if you're one of the 370 people watching, thank you so much for hanging out. If you're new here, please click that subscribe button and check off the bell so you get notified. And here's the big ask. I think it's a good idea for you to rewatch this lesson in a couple of days. A version will come out where I take out the user questions. It ends up being about 25 maybe 28 minutes long but it's just good for your learning to rewatch the lesson. I'm not trying to get extra views but it is good for you to listen to things twice or even three times. It should be a regular habit. Not just on my videos. Let's say you're watching videos on another English channel. Take the time to watch the video and then a couple days later watch it again. It's just good for your brain. It helps you remember. It will even help your pronunciation if you try to say the things out loud. So, this video will come out in about a day and a half. Um a shorter version. Do take the time to listen to it while you cook. Listen to it while you drive. Watch it and if you don't have time for that, at least rewatch any portion where you didn't understand what I was saying. Maybe turn the subtitles on because it'll have English subtitles as well. Hey, one last thing. You should remember that I'm gonna put the link here for a sec. Rod in six minutes. Rod. Rod's. Here, let me put this. Rod's interview with Bob. I'm gonna put this in the chat. There's a link in the chat that says uh Rod's interview with Bob. That's starting in six minutes. If you have the time, head over to Rod's channel and watch that. He would really appreciate it and I would appreciate it as well. Bye to Lolly Lolly and Key Park and Kenya and Ario and Freddie Wolf and Pedro. Bye to Anuant and Yaroslav. Thanks again to all of you who are members. You guys are awesome. By the way, you get your name in green. It's a little handy. Helps me see your name a bit better. Thanks to Dave and Todd for moderating the chat. Bye to Maria C and Mode Eggs. Uh bye to Brent from Speak English with this guy. Bye to Rod uh from Rod the English teacher. Bye to Eugene, Cecilia, Garav, Ario's out there. Um I know Judith's been busy working so I'm not sure she's here. Uh she has to work during the live stream. So, that's uh she does still leave a comment though which I appreciate. Uh bye to Adi the Thai. Bye to Patana. I think that's everyone. I'm gonna say bye to everyone. Have a great weekend. I'm gonna go to work and teach some French this afternoon and uh then I am also going to have a nice weekend. Uh last thing, don't forget uh Tuesday's video, there's a surprise. I'm not gonna tell you what it is. I think you'll like it. It's uh 
I don't want to say too much more. I'm I'm giving too much away. Bye everybody. Have a great day.